Sublet is a computer instruction set with only one instruction, something that is sometimes called a one instruction set computer. This makes it very easy to create an interpreter for it, and it's also be used in some physical hardware. If we look at these sublet instruction now, we can see that it stands for subtract and branch if less than or equal to zero. It takes three operands, A, B and C, that are acted on from left to right. So we can see that um, the B operand is where we're going to store the result of the subtraction. So mem B, so the location in memory, equals mem B minus mem A. So we're going to store whatever's at in memory at location A from whatever's in memory at location B and store that in memory at location B. And then if the result, so mem B, is less than or equal to zero, then we're going to go to C. And that's it, that's all we have. However, from that, we can then synthesize instructions and make everything a bit more complicated. Programming in Sublet can be made really easy by defining macros. So here are some macros that I use. Uh, this is, uh, these are macros that I use through my Splasm macro assembler for Sublet. Uh, if we have a look at the first one, uh, so we have dot macro, which defines a macro, add, which is the name of the macro, and then ab, which are its arguments. And then below there we have sble, which is the name or the mnemonic that I use for sublec rather than writing out sublec in full. It helps with alignment if I can keep to just four characters where possible. And then az, so we're taking a from z. Uh, Z is a common location that uh, defaults to zero and we try to keep it at zero and that's really handy because if I take A from Z, so say I had five uh, in the memory location pointed to by, uh, by A, then if I took um, five from zero, then I would have minus five in Z location. And then the following one, I then do SBLE ZB. So if I then took minus 5 from b, so I would be doing b equals b minus minus 5. Well, if we minus minus, we're actually plussing. So there we are. That's how we do a plus. And then we SBLE ZZ to return z back to 0. And that's where we want to leave it at the end of any operation so that we know that when we use z, we can expect it to be 0. So it's a sort of a temporary location, and, uh, and that can be really handy. Um, one thing to note here, although we said that Sublet has three instructions, to make it easier, we often don't supply the last instruction, and the assembler itself puts it in automatically, and it assumes that it's going to be the next instruction. So it's going to point to the next instruction, unless we actually define it. And that just makes it easier, because most of the time, that's all we are doing. We, uh, we rarely jump. We much more often just uh, subtract. And if we look at another macro, the copy one, uh, so we just copy from source to destination, and all we do there, before we add, we zero the destination. So we do SBLE, dest, dest, so that if we take away itself, uh, take away something from itself, then we zero it, and then we can just add the source to that location. So adding a source to zero, is the same with copying it. And then we have a jump. Again, uh, we're using our Z location. So we're taking something from itself. So whatever is, whatever is in there, but we'll assume it's zero. So zero minus zero is zero. And then our sublet says, well, if it's less than equal zero, then jump. Well, it will be. So therefore, it'll jump to address. And then for the increment on the right-hand side, again, we're making use of the fact that if we take a negative number, then we're in fact adding something. So we use here hash minus one. So what I've done with this macro assembler, I've set up literal pools. So there'll be a location somewhere that will represent the minus one value. And then the hash just tells me, just tells the assembler that I want to point to that literal location. And that makes it much easier than having to keep on defining um, variables every time I need them. It'll just automatically do it as long as I tell it where the literal pool is going to be. The same for the decrement. This time though I'm subtracting one. And, and then for the jump, 
So this is jump if greater than or equal to. And then you can see how we subtract a from z. So, and then that, if that did, if that was less than equal zero, then it would mean that, um, then it would go through the jump and then work out what it's going to do and then uh, jump as appropriate. So as you can see, nice and easy. And then if we wanted to do uh, an add somewhere, we could just use the add mnemonic or if we wanted to do a jump if greater than equals, we can use that. So it makes programming really, really simple as you build up these macros. The other good thing about the macro system within Splasm is that the scope is just within inside the macro. So if we look at the JGE macro there, the labels GTE and done are only for that macro. If it can't find the, uh, so when uh, when we use the macros, or at least when the macros are defined, it compiles the macros down to the uh, to the bare instructions, the bare SBLE instructions, and then it uses the labels that it can from there. It uses the labels from the arguments where it can, and if it can't use any of those, then when it's compiled further in the main body of the code, it will then try and reference the locations from the main body, and that's where it will get Z from in each one of these examples. So uh, yeah, really, really simple. If we turn back to the console now, we can have a look at a Hello World program. So here's a Hello World program. I'll show this up in more detail in a minute. And I just want to show how we would compile it. So if we use Splasm, and then we'll assemble that and create a file called hello world.sq. And then if we look at hello world, and there we are, it's a series of numbers. And then if we wanted to run that, and there we are, hello world. So um, a quick demonstration of a hello world program, just to prove that it works. And then if we take a look now at the hello world program in a little bit more depth. The hello world program shows a couple of features of Sublec. So if we look at the start, uh, below the comment, uh, outputs hello world, we can see uh, two assembler directives that are used within this Splasm assembler, .equ, and we're defining a constant called out and another one called halt, both to minus one. So out uh, is um, effectively a port that we're outputting. Uh, if you send something to that, it'll output a character to it. And if you jump to halt, then the program will finish. So if we start at the program at label loop, we can see that we're subtracting hello from out. So we're subtracting it whatever's at location hello from out. However, one little wrinkle with Sublec is that when we um, use a port, we're actually moving a character as opposed to subtracting. So we actually move, in this case at the start of the program, we would move the character H to out, to our output port. Uh, if you look at the label hello, we can see that it's an ASCII zero, so it's a, a zero terminated ASCII string. And then, strictly speaking, we wouldn't have had to zero terminate it because right below it we're using Z, uh, which is um, set to zero. But, uh, but in any case, just to keep things tidy, I've used a, a zero terminated ASCII string there. And then as the program goes down, so first of all, we output that character to out. And then we are then incrementing. So remember, we're taking a, a minus number. So we're adding one to loop. Now, if you look at loop, well, the first uh, location in loop, ignore the SBLE because that isn't actually stored. We just store the three, uh, the three operands because it's always got one instruction. So we're incrementing loop, which means we're incrementing the value hello, uh, pointed to by hello currently which means it'll move to the next location in the hello string, which will be E. So then effectively, SBLE will be hello plus one, out. And then the next instruction, we're uh, again incrementing. We're incrementing this time check end plus one. So we've got, uh, if we look at the check end loop, uh, label, sorry. Uh, the first location is Z there. The next one 
is hello. So again, we're incrementing the same pointer effectively. Uh, so again, that'll be pointing to E next. And then it's saying that we're taking zero from that location at, at uh, hello, the place pointed to within the string. And then if it's less than equal zero, then it'll halt. So effectively, this is looking for the zero termination. And if it finds it, then it'll halt. Otherwise, we're going to jump back up to loop and continue the process again. Output the next character, move the pointer, check if it's zero, loop again. And, um, and that's all there is to the Hello World program. Really, really simple. It demonstrates, demonstrates the output port, uh, the halt location, and it also shows how we really need to make use of self-modifying code within sublec, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to have any pointers. Um, but I think it demonstrates it really quite well. I want to finish the code demonstrations by showing a simple FizzBuzz program. Uh, so if we have a look, here we are. Uh, so we can see at the start, or near the start, uh, after the license statement, that we have two include files, standard and IO. I'll come back to those, but uh, they're just in, in, um, including some standard routines that I use. And uh, if we look down further at the program, so first of all, we SBLE ZZ main. So we're skipping the data storage section and then starting execution at main. To have a look at the data storage location though, we can see some of the useful figures that we would use. So the count, so this is how high we want to count to in our FizzBuzz program. And then um, we have three strings. We have FizzBuzz, Fizz and Buzz the space character, and then if we see there we have dot L pool, so that's our literal pool. So that's where any literals that we use will be stored when, it, uh, when the program is assembled. And then if we go down further, uh, so we're incrementing the count, seeing if we're done yet, and then if not, we divide it by 15, uh, well sorry, we check whether, we dictate the modular of uh, of it, um, 15, and then see whether it's divisible by 15, and then if it is, then we'll output fizzbuzz. If not, we'll continue execution, check if it's divisible by 3, and then, and then 5. And then if either of those say that it is divisible by that, then it'll jump to the locations fizzbuzz, fizz, or buzz as appropriate. It'll print the string, and then jump to next n, and then uh, output a space character, and then um, start the process all over again at loop. So re really, really simple, but you can see how we built up the program using the, uh, using the macros. I'll have a look at Here we are. So this is our standard macros that I'm using. So here again, as, as we saw before, the add macro, the jump, the copy, increment, decrement, and then negate, various other macros. Uh, we were using mod in our one. Here we are. So uh, where is it? Mod, there we are. So that's our mod AB. This is still very much a work in progress. Um, I'll put a link to Splasm in the article. Uh, but it is a work in progress at the moment as I'm trying out different things and I've got a slightly different uh, instruction set that I'm planning to move it towards. Uh, so it'll, hopefully it'll, well, it should still continue to support Sublec because it's um, based on that. But it's taken it in a little different direction, which I think makes it much better, which I'll show in a later video. But for the moment, in any case, it's, uh, it assembles to uh, sublec. And then we can hear, see here that we have our mod AB. Uh, so nice, simple instruction to take the modular. Um, and really what this does, because uh, the, the numbers can be positive or negative, first of all, it turns it into a positive number and then uh, handles that to uh, to get the answer, so uh, it handles it with a, an unsigned modulo. Uh, okay, so that's the um, the standard macros that we're using. 
I also have a look at and here we are so we've got our equate uh, to out minus one and then here's our little print string routine that we used in that previous one and uh, here's the uh, print in, in 16 so it prints a 16-bit number this I need to work with as far as removing the leading zeros and also making it more architectural independent but uh, but it works in any case as far as our demonstration is concerned and then if I Sorry, my wrong location. The finger trouble here. We're not very good at doing two things at once, speaking and typing. There we are. Good. And there we are. Nice demonstration of FizzBuzz. Uh, the other programs that I just showed, uh, they uh, they have little test routines for them. So if I show And there we are. And that's just testing each one of the routines. Each dot uh, is an equate that's passed, and then the forward slash at the end just indicates that it's it's like a tick to say, yep, that's passed. Uh, great. Okay, so that's a demonstration of FizzBuzz, the uh, the standard testing as well, and um, and ultimately it's just showing how you can just build up layers after layer using the macros. The macros are really great for for creating scope and uh, are making things much easier to read. And all in all, Sublex is a nice little instruction set. It does have a few problems in as much as it's a bit, of cu bit cumbersome when you want to use pointers. You need to use self-modification, which can be a security risk, but then again, what are you going to be using it for? And uh, there's also some wrinkles as far as different architect architectures and how portable and, and how different the implementations are. I want to wrap up by mentioning a few other people and projects. So Oleg Mazon Mazonka, I'm sorry if I mispronounced the name. Uh, well, my first experiments were with Sublec. We're using Oleg's assembler and interpreter. He's done quite a bit with Sublec, including creating a simplified uh, typeless C-style language, which he calls Higher Sublec. So uh, this is his web page, and I'll include a link to this in the uh, accompanying article. Definitely worth having a check out. He's had, uh, spent quite a lot of time with it, written quite a few articles on it, uh, published some papers. So uh, definitely worth having a look at him. And then I also came across the Kimu Kimuno project, which is an interesting one because, well, it's a micro microprocessor dev kit emulator. Uh, unfortunately, it clashes with an, uh, another emulator for the Kim one. But, um, but in any case, it's a nice project. So he's... Uh, included details about how to make this uh, this little hardware project here and uh, and he's put the source code up on github so again that's worth looking at uh, it's um, it uses an Arduino microcontroller to run a sublec emulator so I'll include a link to that and then the final one is dawn dawn is Quite something. It's a multitasking operating system created to run on a sublec virtual machine. So it's got uh, a GUI, it's got a touch screen support, sound joystick, cameras, uh, SMP support, all sorts of things. Uh, it seems to have been written using uh, its supplied C compiler, which compiles down to sublec. And yeah, it really is very impressive. Uh, it was written by a, Hug a Hungarian uh, who goes by the name of uh, Gary or Jerry, I don't know. And uh, there's some screenshots on the website, so you can see that uh, it's um, it's certainly busy and uh, able to do lots of things. Here we are, some more touch, more screenshots. You can see the uh, touchscreen keyboard here, which looks very nice. And I'll include a, an article to that as well. Right. Well, there we have it. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed seeing uh, seeing the sublet. 
uh, Sublec uh, instruction set. Uh, I think it's really quite interesting. It's interesting partly because it's so simple that it makes it quite easy to theorise around it. Uh, although, of course, it does have problems around self-interpretation, and, uh, and of course that is an issue. But uh, all in all, I quite enjoy playing with it. I quite enjoy programming it. I enjoy building the macros up. And um, if you want to have a look at it in a bit more depth, uh, do have a look at the accompanying article. You can uh, have a look at the uh, the Splasm assembler that I've been working on, and that's uh, hopefully you might find that interesting. Also, take a look at some of the uh, the web pages, uh, Oleg's site. Uh, I've, um, uh, I've corresponded with him a couple of times, or quite a while ago, but he seems like a nice guy. Uh, Dawn, uh, well, that's a really interest the Dawn OS. Sorry, that's a really interesting project. Uh, Gary is quite a colourful character. Um, he's uh, I think a lot of it's quite sort of politically motivated or um, uh, maybe not polit politically motivated is the right way to put it, but he's got some quite strong sort of ethics around Dawn OS that he's interested in. So uh, yeah, he's quite interesting. And the Kimono project looks good fun as well, so have a look at that. So um, if you like this article or uh, and want to see other things like it, do check out some of our other articles on the Tech Tinkering website and have a look at the Tech Tinkering, uh, Tech Tinkering YouTube channel.